It is week seven of the regular season in Minnesota high school football. Tonight, we get to see the defending state champions in class 6A, the Maple Grove Crimson, come to St. Michael to take on the St. Michael Albertville Knights. From STMA High School, John Jacobson along with Ryan Iverson. And Ryan, we last saw Maple Grove in week one when they defeated Osseo. Lost in week two, but they've really turned things up since then, scoring at least 41 points in each of their last four games, and they're now five and one. Yeah, and we knew going into the season this year, they lost a ton from that state championship team. And like any good program, they had to retool and get a lot of young players, the reps and the confidence, and they were only going to get better as the year's gone on. And uh, they certainly have done that, running the football, dominating the line of scrimmage and, and beating some really good teams too along the way. The Knights three and six a year ago down for them. This has been an outstanding football program in the last dozen years and more. But they've come by into this season with three wins in the last four games after an 0-2 start and they feel like they're playing some good football right now. Yeah and we talked to coach Jared Essler to, you know before the game here tonight John and he said takeaways turnovers same thing as that's what's haunting the Vikings right now but it doesn't matter how good you play if you turn the football over over more than you you'd get take you know take away from the other team you're going to put yourself in huge holes and you're going to beat yourself and that's been the message for them a couple of really nice wins they're three and three on the year the fun thing about tonight in this matchup john is they both like to run the football and they both play really good defense so it's kind of a, a battle of two like-minded teams excited to see it let's look at our key players and the run game will certainly be a factor tonight and the weather's going to play a part of that too right now a strong wind rain expected and two really good runs running backs Ryan Kadia for St. Michael Alberville and Chuck Ongalo is having a, perhaps a record setting single season season at Maple Grove. Yeah, 20 touchdowns already. If he gets uh, like he normally does uh, four or five touchdowns a night, he'll have the all-time touchdowns in a single season for Maple Grove. But both of these guys, very, very good. They're both going to, you're going to call their names a lot tonight. They're going to get 20 plus carries. And I'll tell you, whichever line of scrimmage, whoever can control that offensive line is going to win this game. But those two are explosive and they're no strangers to the end zone. So get ready to watch uh, two of the best running backs we have in the state. I don't know how much passing we'll see tonight. Night, but I think it certainly uh, the weather will play a factor. It may be not the passing game if the key teams keep it on the ground, but the kicking game is going to be affected. Yeah, kicking game with the wind. But I think what's, what else is kind of understated with these guys, John, is they don't pass a lot, but when they do, they're usually very effective, right? Because they run the football so well, play action, getting their quarterbacks out, getting them some easy throws, and they both like to take shots when you least expect it. So kind of keeps defenses off balance, and it's, it should be a really even and, and good matchup tonight. I look forward Forward to it and we'll kick it off in just a minute. Maple Grove, St. Michael Albertville High School Football live next on CCX. John Jacobson with Ryan Iverson back at St. Michael Albertville High School. Since we did pregame, the rain has picked up here. It's a strong wind and not an ideal night for, for football. Well, this is uh, October in Minnesota, and we, we'll deal with it the next two and a half hours. Well, you and I were just talking. You see, 13-mile-an-hour wind, that's probably what's going to be more detrimental tonight than anything. But about four years ago, you and I did a game in the snow, right? So right. you never know. This time of year, you could get snow. You could get 80 degrees. It's... It's Minnesota in the fall. Keegan Church kicks off and we are underway and welcome to CCX coverage of high school football. Mongama dropped it, picks it back up and only gets to the 20 yard line. And that's where Maple Grove will start with their first possession of the game. Noah Miller, special teams tackle for the Knights. We can take it to the house. So great special teams coverage there. I'll tell you, when you're playing a team that's 5-1, and one, ranked second in the metro area, you want to get off to a great start, right? I mean, Maple Grove has won the last few matchups here. 
Of course, the great one that we were involved in. How many years ago was that? Where, six six yeah. years ago, the yeah, the one of the best Maple games, Grove Miracle. Yeah. So if you're the Knights tonight, you want to come out three and out, get the ball to your offense, get something positive going, get an early lead, put some pressure on the defending state champs. And on a rollout, Caden Harney is going to throw deep on the first play of the game, and he hits completion across midfield to Dylan Vocal. It's a gain of 35 yards. Vocal, an explosive wide receiver when they throw the ball. He has 20 catches and averaging about 18 yards per grab. Well, two things, like we said in the pregame, John, they don't throw a lot, but when they do, they'll take shots. Down the field, they'll play action. And if you don't think that feels right, did you see about the 10-yard slide after the catch? Great diving catch. And Caden Harney, only a sophomore, first year starting as quarterback. I think the thing that's the most impressive about that is you see that almost 70% completion. When they throw, he takes advantage of it and does not turn the ball over either. Officially a gain of 33. The direct snap to Vocal gives to Langama, made a little juke move, and there he goes down the left sideline. And inside the 20-yard line, and in two plays, Maple Grove has moved from its own 20 to the STMA 17. Did you see that footwork in the backfield? Watch this. An open shot at him. Watch Langama right there, that little in and out. I'm gonna tell you, when you you get a shot at him, you got to take advantage of it. He's so good once he gets into the open field. And you can just see his confidence has grown game by game by game. Gain of 25, direct snap, vocal, breaks a tackle, going for the end zone, dives for the pylon. They're going to say he stepped out of bounds out at the two-yard line, a gain of 16. Yeah, really efficient direct snap that time to vocal. Looked like they had him bottled up there, right in, uh, in between the tackles. He's able to bounce it to the outside. His 14th rush of the season averages about nine yards yeah. per carry. He's just a playmaker. You're going to see him on defense. We saw him already with the big catch. Kind of does a little bit of everything for the Crimson. First and goal from the two. It's Langama on the direct snap. Hits traffic. Bottled up. Gets to the goal line. And he's going to be marked short. He's second and goal from about a foot away. You know, we saw the speed and the, the shiftiness, but there you saw a little bit of that power. Took a couple hits in the backfield. Watch those legs keep driving, John, right? There's contact. You see him just bounce off of that and still finish in good tackle. Not to allow, allow him to get into the end zone. That was a great tackle. Second down and goal. Langama. Takes it himself. There's a flag down. He got into the end zone, but this is coming back. It'll be a procedure penalty against Maple Grove. You can see him doing a lot of direct snaps tonight. We've seen Vocal, and that time again, Lankama. Direct snaps with Caden Harney out of the game. Yeah, false start. Those kind of penalties are, are killers. Coaches hate that. When you're knocking on the doorstep, you at the two moving backwards. So second and goal from back at the six yard line now. Yeah, looks like they're gonna go with this time again with Volkol, direct snap. It's Langama into the end zone for a touchdown. Rushing touchdown number 21 of the season for the junior. And Maple Grove on top 6 0, 208 into the game. Well, when you're a good football team and you're trying to win another state championship, you go on the road, that's how you send a message, right? Three plays all the way in, into you know, first and goal, and they punch it in and get a just a dominant opening possession that time by the Crimson. Exactly what you want to do in this element with the wind, with the rain on the road. And receivers for the extra point, and it's not good. I think he got blocked. And six to nothing. I think there was a hand on that ball, and so we stay at 6 0. We'll look at the touchdown again. And Montgomery getting in for the score. I mentioned the 20 rushing touchdowns, five receiving touchdowns on the season. Maple Grove with an impressive drive that 
Got them down the field in a hurry. The one pass play to start from Harney to Vocal. And then five runs gets them into the end zone. Ball falling off the tee. And talked about the wind perhaps being a factor in the kicking game tonight. Um, you're going to have to hold it now. Braden Dozier will hold it here for Seavers. It's a strong kick away. It will be handled at the 10 yard line. Saltamacchio and returns it out to the 30 yard line. The senior, Luca Saltamacchio, one of the uh, seniors honored tonight on senior night here at STMA. Return of 20 yards. Last time they're ever going to play football for sure at, at home in front of their home you know, crowd, their parents, their friends. So big night for those guys and they got to come out tonight and they got to they got to match that opening drive as you look at Will Bartle having a, a pretty good year. A couple of interceptions early, but really the last few games has really picked it up. Kadia breaks a tackle at the line of scrimmage looked like he was going to get bottled up and ends up going for seven yards. Ethan Berry on the tackle for the Crimson, but a good run for Padilla as he gets out to the 20, 37 yard line. Again, a gain of seven. Yeah, and he's averaging seven yards a carry, John. He's, you see, he's only 5'7, 160, so not very big, but he is explosive. And I'll tell you, sometimes, especially behind a big offensive line, it's hard to see when someone's, you know, short like that. He is very, very explosive. And the pitch goes to him, pitch a little bit behind him, but he gets it, has a first down, gets outside and picks up another six yard line, six yards out to the 43. Bo Dreheim on the tackle, but Cadillo two carries for 13 yards and a first down. Yeah, not easy to do as you take a look at the starting lineups there for, for both teams. Uh, he had to kind of pause for that, stop his momentum and then pick up again. Maple Grove normally does such a good job, John, of setting the edge, not allowing that ball carry to get to the outside. That time they were able to get free and pick up a first down. First down and 10 from the 43 for the Knights. Bartle play action goes down the left sideline and incomplete. Good coverage downfield by Dozier as he was defending Saltamacchio. Yeah, a little play action. Again, we talked about it when they throw. They're taking shots and I love that call. Oops, excuse me, not Saltamacchio. Yeah. That was number nine. That's Ryan Hiltner. The intended receiver. Yeah, really well defended that time too. Dozier in great position. I, I tell you what I love too, John. He got his head around. You see so many defensive backs don't play the ball. Second down and 10, 838 to play here in the opening quarter. 7-0 Maple Grove or 6-0 Maple Grove with a touchdown on their opening drive. Bartle will pitch it to Kadia. Runs nice into play. a tackler and gets dropped for a loss of one. Tackled made by Bo Thien. Yeah, only a sophomore, and I'll tell you that time he was ready for it. That ball nearly got picked off. Sam Hansen, the defensive end for Maple Grove, got up the field and he almost was able to pick that toss off. They give him forward progress, so it's officially no gain in third down and ten. Yeah, and this is a tough down and distance against a Maple Grove defense, right? Because they, you want to get that third and short, third and manageable. Bardo, little receiver screen, and there's the tackle made by Jacob Urbanic. He was ready for it on the catch made by Owen Agee. And it goes for no gain. And after one first down, STMA will have to punt. Yeah, I love that call. It's a great play against an aggressive defense. You got to let that one develop just a little bit longer. And Rabanic just right there. You know, we say it every time we do a Maple Grove game, John, but those linebackers so good. Aren't they athletic? They always are around the ball, too. Snap picked up by Luster. And Vocal will let it go. We'll take an STMA roll and it'll go all the way down to the 12 yard line. So kick of 44 yards with no return. Yeah, and a great job by Luster just to get that off. Short, short snap, able to get it. Didn't rush it and got a good bounce. And you flip field position there. 
Look at the offense and defense for Maple Grove and STMA. We, the first series was so quick we didn't have a chance to uh, take a look at it. Ramonka and Vocal, the only guys that started out of 11 a, a year ago for Maple Grove, the rest of those guys, including that entire offensive line, all new yep. as far as varsity starters this year. You know, in, in talking to Coach Lombardi, he, you know, he talked about how just game by game get better. Every week get better. He knew there was going to be mistakes early, and they've just gotten better and better. It helps when you have that guy, too, to right. hand the ball off to. And Gamu got called up at the end of the last year, but wasn't part of their running game. They have Jordan Logbajou and uh, Charlie Roush, and, of course, Jacob Kilzer, who was an outstanding weapon as a runner and as a thrower at quarterback. Well, it's a nice thing to fall into to have him coming up because he is he's really and, and that's what makes high school sports John so great is every year someone new gets an opportunity and what do you do with it and he has certainly grabbed that bull by the horns and he's just been you check the box scores you almost think it's a misprint all the touchdowns and the yards that he's gotten his second run breaking tackles he's got a first down out past the 25 and thrown down at about the 27. After a three yard gain on the first play, picks up about a dozen here. Yeah, and I think that's probably what's been most impressive is the versatility of his running, right? He's got great speed. We've seen him break long gains for touchdowns. You see the power there. I mean, taking contact and carrying that pile an extra eight, nine yards. He can catch the ball out of the backfield, too. He's just been a, a really complete running back for this team. It hurt you in so many different ways. Line of scrimmage now, the 28 officially a gain of 13. Nearing the midway point here of the opening quarter. Vocal in motion. And they give it to Henry Stang's got a little seam left side. Steam's going to Stang's going to have a first down 45 yard line and out to the 47. Stang another guy like Vocal they'll use occasionally in the run game and usually for chunk plays like that. Yeah nice setup play here. I want you to watch number seven bro Dre Bo Dreheim watch the kick out block right there. There was a night in position, just that little punch out allowed Stang to turn the corner, get to the outside, and pick up the first down. You know, and Coach Lombardi really, you know, for a lot of his career has been known as a defensive guy. You know, he calls the plays offensively, and they've they've really expanded over the years. He, he can beat you in, in, in a variety of different sets, different motions, different plays. Staying averaging over 14 yards a carry. It's his 10th carry of the season. They go back to Langama here, got to midfield on the first down run from the 47. And this season, when you can hold number 21 to three yards, it's a victory for your defense, right? Yeah, Jackson Brutker, middle linebacker, lead, leading tackler for the Knights that time. I mean, he's going to have his, his hands full tonight. And that was a great job. He filled that hole quickly. And if you can get contact on Langama, within three yards and hold him there. That's a job well done. He's going to challenge not only that defensive line, but those linebackers and, and the secondary too really has to be available tonight for the Knights supporting, stopping that run. We mentioned the SDMA and, and we talked about this in the pregame, Ed, how they've improved from the beginning of the season. Started 0-2 with losses to Blaine and Anoka, but have come back with three wins in the last four games. There's a hole, here goes Lungama. And he's going to be caught from behind at the 10 yard line. Another big run didn't go for the score. He was caught from behind by Jacob Dinius, but it's a pickup of 40 yards. Well, two things stand out. Great job up front. I saw a lot of blue on the ground at the line of scrimmage, and I love Dinius on this play. A lot of teams would have just given up, right? Watch number 10 come into your vision here, chasing him down, did not give up on that play. That's a great touchdown saving tackle, even though it's a big game for the Crimson. First and goal from the 10 yard line. Crimson looking for their second touchdown already in the game. Fake in the throw, ball got tipped in the backfield and incomplete. Drew Luster, senior defensive end, gets in there and uh, breaks up the pass. Yeah, that was a heads up play, and that's what you're taught. If you're not going to be able to get to the quarterback and get a sack, get those hands up. He's a big kid, Drew is. Got his hands up, able to bat that down. If he doesn't do that, I couldn't, I think it was uh, Dreheim was wide open in the flat there, number seven. That would have been a touchdown. So big, big play there by Drew Luster. Second and goal from the 10.
Arnie back up under center. He'll go to Dreheim. And oh, nice he is going to be dropped for long. Again, and there is a penalty flag down. Nice play by Klosser that time and got off the block and got his hands on Langama. And that's not an easy tackle. That was a great play. Is it going to go against STMA? Is uh, Jared Essler in the middle of your screen there? Yeah, 13th season. Jared just inducted into the North Dakota State Hall of Fame for football. Was a free safety up there. With the end of the play, and there's oh, the, face the mask. twisting. Yep. 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 Oh, great effort. That's one you can live with. That was an outstanding effort. Direct snap. One gamma will only get to the four here. And Kloster and on, on the stop again. Evan Becker, big number 68, in on that play too. And that's what it's going to take to stop a running back like that is those defense alignment. You're going to have to beat your block. You can't just eat up space. you got to defeat your block. You need all hands on deck. And if you can get Langama before he's able to get in that open field, that's a win. Crimson changing personnel here. Clock running down to 3.20 to play. And it looks like they're going to take a timeout here with a third and goal coming from just inside the STMA five-yard line. And what's tricky too, John, is when you play Maple Grove, what do you what do you prepare against, right? We've already seen big, big plays in the passing game. We've seen direct snaps to two different people. You've got play action. you got all this different stuff. So you're never quite sure. You can't just hone in on... You know, one specific play or player, you really got to have discipline on defense. You got to play your assignment, and then you got to be be ready to read and react from that. Matt Lombardi is 13th year, started his year uh, same year as a head coach as uh, Jared Essler did at SDMA. Each of these guys has won a state championship. Essler in 2015 with the Knights, and Matt Lombardi two straight prep bowl appearances of the Crimson in an unbeaten season in 2022. And last week won his 100th career game at Maple Grove. Well, John, you said it in the pregame, but both of these programs really two of the best programs in the state of Minnesota. I know. STMA last year and this year, maybe not the record they're accustomed to having, but I mean, sustained success for, for 10, 15 years um, for both of these programs and both of those coaches. They're, they're two of the best in the business. Third and goal from the five. They're going to throw to Sting, and he's dropped back at the 12-yard line. In, the, in on the tackle for the third state straight play is Gage Coster. You know, he stayed home. He got push up the field. You see all the flow going that way, and I think what happens is, is Kloster able to get to that outside, and he stayed there. He's made a couple of big plays on this on this here. And it's going to force a field goal. Remember, the extra point was blocked, too. The yeah, field goal attempt of 28 yards for Henry Stevers out of the hold of Dylan Vocal down. This kick is away clean and it is up and it is not good at the distance but missed. And so we stay at six to nothing. That's a win for the Knights on defense. They give up big plays, you give up yardage, but you end up holding them to nothing. Well, and then you, look, you go back to the, the, the catch by, or the catch, the tackle by Dinius on Longama on that long run. Right, it was so important. And I, I mean, how many times do you see a, a guy, especially like Longama with great speed, get in the open field and guys kind of just start jogging and it's like, hey, he didn't quit on that play and he ended up saving his team six points. That was a huge, huge tackle and a good hold there in the red zone. So the Knights get the uh, ball back for the second time in the game. Bartle, the quarterback, will keep. And he's got a first down and much more. Stumbles a little bit and he gets out past the 40 to the 41 yard line. A gain of 21 for the Knights quarterback. Yeah, and he's been a very capable runner this year. He's a good athlete. And that was a designed run, but I love watch right there. He comes, cuts back. You see the seam there showing off good speed. And I think he 
trying to make a move. Maybe that wet surface got his feet tangled up just a little bit. He probably could have gotten another five or ten yards, but great play. The average is about seven yards per rush. First and ten from the 21. Marto will look to the bench and then come back under center or take it out of the shotgun rather. Two backs with him. And he'll hand and for a gain of a couple to Kadia, who's got his fourth rush here of the first quarter. A gain of two, second and eight. A nice play by Sam Hansen there. Defensive end, and that's what you're taught. You get up the field, there's no one there. You slide right on down. He just came down the line, made a really nice play. Inside of a minute and a half to go here in the quarter. And off Kadia breaks one tackle and gets out past the 45 to the 47 yard line. Tackle made by uh, Jack Weigel along with Aiden Gunville. Kadia like comes yeah. off limping on yeah. a bit here. That's not a good sign. Hopefully nothing serious. Looked like maybe someone rolled up on his foot or his ankle there. No third down and four coming. Yeah, manageable down and distance here. That's that's all the Knights need to do is get a couple yards first and second down. You just don't want to be putting that third and ten, third and eight. This is much more manageable here because you got every play on the table, run or pass. And down for a loss in the backfield goes the quarterback Bartle. Bo Drehein, number seven, got loose and drops. The quarterback for a three yard loss. Oh, great play, great read. You, you thought maybe, you know, on that play with Kadia out of the game, you thought maybe it was going to be a designed quarterback run for Bartle, and it certainly was. A little bit of hesitation there. And you see all the white jerseys in the backfield led by that guy right there, Dreheim, made his presence felt defensively here. Maple Grove called the timeout? I believe they did. Probably to get the win right on the yep. punt, I'm assuming. Well, and, and if you're the Knights, you, you're, you know, obviously you want to continue the drive and you want to score, but if anything, you got that big Bartle run, at least you changed field position a little bit. They were buried, you know, back within the 20 there. They got that big run, at least moved the ball towards midfield. I certainly hope he's still limping there. I hate to see that. Different, but I would argue Kadia is probably just as important to the Knights as Langama would be to yep. Maple Grove, right? right? I mean, obviously, maybe not the the yards and the overall touchdowns, but he's a really their explosive playmaker on offense for the Knights. Second punt for Luster here in the first quarter. Yeah, that wet ball. We saw a snap earlier. Let's see if we can get a good snap. Yep. Good kick away. Handled by Vocal. Fair caught at the 21 yard line. 20.5 seconds to go. You know how hard that is to catch a punt when it's raining? Well, even if it's not raining, it's just it's it's nerve wracking when you're looking up and you know everyone's running down at you. You throw in gusts of 20 mile per hour wind and rain. That's not an easy thing to do. 36 yard punt with no return. And once we get a pass, it'll be the final offensive well, play here of. I was just going to say, quarter. I wonder with the wind behind them, would they try to take a shot here before the last play of the quarter? I mean, that's the reason. Yeah, for the, I wouldn't be surprised the, to see the a play action here. Or... First and 10, Crimson from the 21. Third time with the ball in the quarter, and it is indeed a pass intended yep. for Ramatka, and they get a penalty downfield. The big tight end interfered with going for the ball and, and get a defensive a pass interference penalty. Whistle against Hudson Stone. Yeah, and I thought Hudson Stone was in great position there. And I'll tell you what it is, John. Remember earlier we saw STMA take a shot. You've got to get your head around. 
You can see when you don't get your head around and you do that, it's an easy call. Whether it's right or wrong, it's an easy call for the referees to make. They want to see defensive players making a play on the ball. Yeah, well defended. I thought they might do a little play action, try to take a shot with that wind behind them. See Coach Essler saying he was, there was no contact. And for a referee, it's a, you know, it's, it's a point of emphasis that defensive players have to make a play on the ball. You see that in the NFL, you see it in college. If you get your head around, even if there's a little bit of contact, they're much more lenient for you. 15 yard penalty in high school for pass interference. Ball at the 36 yard line, they go to Lungama. It's outside of the 40, 45, a first down out to midfield. Yeah, I thought he, he had a better hole if he cut it up a little bit earlier, but instead, didn't matter. He's fast enough, gets to the outside, turns it up, and. Oh, there's a, they're holding. I didn't see a flag down. Yep, so that will wipe out the uh, first down run. And I wonder if it was on that kick out block there at the end. Second penalty for Maple Grove. And ball now back at the 26 for Maple Grove. Yeah, I think if you see, I think they're going they got 65 right there. Yeah, right at the end. And that's why I thought I thought Langamo was going to cut that up there, John. Instead, he took it to the outside, and I I I think he was surprised. I think Perus was a surprise that he took it to the outside. They go to Vocal on the run on first and 20 and pretty well stretched out by STMA and throwing him out of bounds is Dinius after a short gain with half a second left on the clock here in the stadium. Gain of five for Vocal who's touched the ball twice on rushes and he has the one catch to open the game. Second and 15 for the Crimson from the 31. With vocal in motion, Harney will give it to nice Lungano who's hit at the 30, got back to the line of scrimmage, and that is it on the final play of the first quarter. Maple Grove scores on its opening drive. And we stay at 6 0. More football in CCX in a moment. Rainy night in St. Michael, Minnesota. John Jacobson, Ryan Iverson, Maple Grove, STMA football live for you on this Thursday night. Just one week left in the regular season. Uh, STMA will close it out with Mounds U next Wednesday, and Maple Grove will host a good Minnetonka team next Thursday afternoon at 1 o'clock. Well, I, th I think a lot of people thought Minnetonka might really fall off when their quarterback got hurt. Played Ian Prairie last week and we're down big, but came back, made it a made it a good game. <clears throat> yeah, they're a little banged up right now. I'll be interested to see yeah. how they uh, match up next week with uh, Maple Grove. Always seems to be a uh, a good game when those teams play. They don't play every year, but they had uh, a yeah. great battle last year that Maple Grove rallied to win early in the season, kind of set the tone for that yeah. championship year. Well, and did Maple Grove was it Moundsview they played in the state tournament? Early on, that were no, down. They, or beat, who, who they was beat that? Moundsview. They were down in uh, Eastridge, maybe. Well, they lost to uh, uh, Eastridge. They played in the playoff in the state playoffs, and Lakeville South 
uh, they played as well in the state semifinals. That, that Eastview game, every every state champion has that one game where where you got to really dig deep. Langama on third and long got some of the yardage back, but handled by STMA. And so that early penalty in the drive hurt Maple Grove, and now it's well. They, they, Caden Harney is still out there. I wouldn't be surprised here if they go for a hard count. See if they can get the Knights to jump off sides. On fourth and seven from the 39. Oh, backing up. He's or the quick kick. Quick kick, yeah. And gets the kick oh, away, oh, and nobody back wow. for SDMA, and that works out very well. Henry Stang will go back and down it at the 11-yard line of the Knights. Well, not only do you get the element of surprise there, but you also don't have as long of a long snap, too, when that ball's wet. So smart heads-up play. you got to have a lot of trust in your quarterback to get that off, and certainly something they practiced. And, and you have no returner either, so you get that roll if you're lucky. 45-yard kick from Harney. Kick and roll. Kick and roll. <laughs> <laughs> so the Knights with their worst starting field position of the night. Kadia back in the game. He gets hit by Dreheim and does not get much. Urbana comes in to help in on the tackle. It'll be a very short gain, second down and long. There's a flag on the play. It came in right at the end. A lot of times that's a defender coming in there. You think a face mask, yeah. A 15-yard penalty uh, give the Knights a first down. Third first down in the game for STMA, and it gets him out in uh, yeah, a little, little better field position, room, right? Yeah. Out to the 27. And remember, now they have the wind behind them. Won't be surprised to see them take a shot through the air as well. Bardo play action and is indeed going to go to the air. Throws to his left and almost intercepted. Stang on the coverage for Maple Grove. Intended receiver Owen Eggy. Yeah, I like the call. I like the play action. Good luck. Maple Grove almost with an interception there. Good positioning by Henry Stang. Stang, who last year had a big interception in that Eastridge game that yep. you were referring to late in that game that sealed that win in the state quarterfinals. That's one of those that when you get home tonight, you look back on it like, I could have possibly had a pick six there. As a player, you, 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 you don't get those opportunities a lot. How about that? Just carrying the pile. A second down run and a good one for Madden Grabo. On his first carry tonight, he's there. Second rusher behind the Kadia who will get the ball out of the backfield and then second down and 10 is able to pick up six plus yards on that. Yeah, it came into the, the game 100, 168 yards, three touchdowns, so very capable running back. And you saw the power there as he dragged that pile. Yeah, closer to closer to nine yards than yep. six and the quarterback sneak will go for a first down for Bartle. Well, and that's why that second down run was so big. He gets stopped and it's third and eight and it's a you know a known passing down completely different. You're third and one. Just let your athletic quarterback take it over. And Bartle gets the first down. Second first down of the drive for the Knights. First down and ten from the 38. Kadia six rushes tonight in the backfield. Bartle up under center on first and 10 from the 38. Kadia gets the call up the middle, nice. out past the 45 to the 47. Rush of close to nine yards, tackled by Urbanic. Yeah, and watch the guys up front, really well blocked. Nice kick out block there. When you're not getting contact from anyone four or five yards down the field, you know your offensive line did their job. Good patience, too, on that one. Nice, great first down gain. Bothine also in on the stop. Second down and less than one here for the Knights. Give it back to Kadia. Ran into Dreheim, but able to push himself out 
past the 48 lost his helmet but it'll be another night's first down so moving the ball well here on this drive early in the second quarter. Yeah, a nice job, just slippery running right there. There wasn't a lot of room. He had a real subtle cutback to the right and didn't get much, but got enough for a first down. And that's why winning first down, getting seven, eight, nine yards on first down, so important for the Knights. Jaden Myers now the fullback. They'll give it to Gray Bowl, trying to pick a spot. He's into Crimson territory and gets four yards, three yards down to the 48 yard line of Maple Grove. Yeah, Cedric Buchholz, outside linebacker, coming down, making that play. And again, you see Gray Bowl just kind of carrying that pile. Not much there. Still able to get some positive yards out of it. Buchholz has been moved around. He's a linebacker, now lines up at safety. And some plays, but kind of a hybrid right yeah. now where he's certainly lined up on the field. You, you can see almost three middle linebackers there. Roll out for Bartle on second down, throws and gets the completion at the sideline. It'll be a first down for STMA and Luster on the catch. We see him on offense, punting, and defense. Uh, defense yeah, kind doing of it all tonight. Nice throw, too. Nice play action. Rolling out to the right. Good patience, too and puts it in a great spot. If he underthrows that or throws it to the inside, that's picked off. Watch him put this high into the outside where only Drew Luster could catch it. And look at him just get that. Remember, you only need one foot down in high school football. Got that first foot down. And the Knights really a nice drive here, sustaining nice drives, picking up first downs. Pickup of 13, first and 10 from the 35. Grabo, gonna have another three yards yep. or so to the 32 yard line. Buchholz on the tackle from behind. Well, the biggest thing, John, is no negative yard plays and no penalties, right? You're not putting yourself at first and 20, first and 15. They're getting positive yards on every first down, and then they're pairing it up with a great second down. And it doesn't have to be fancy. It doesn't have to be a home run. You just move the change, move the chains, and pick up first downs. And not only that, but you're keeping Maple Grove's offense off the field, too. You're not letting Langama back on the field. This is exactly the kind of drive Coach Essler would want. From the 32 of the Crimson on second down and seven. Bartle pitched to Kadia, cuts it back inside and gets to the 30 yard line. Tackled nicely by Jacob Rubanek there. It'll set up third down and five. Yeah, and that was one of those plays where really both teams I thought played it really well. Maple Grove set the edge, forced him to cut back and didn't look like anything was there. Still able to pick up a couple of yards, but well defended by Maple Grove. And you're definitely in four down territory yep. here at the 30 yard line. Third and five for the Knights. And if you have that mentality, you don't necessarily need to get it all right. You'll take three yards, two give, yards right here. Give to Grabo or you'll take six and get a first down to the 24. Well, we've seen tonight when he's run the football, it seems like there's not much there. And you see him get lower and just kind of move that pile. And again, watch the contact right there. I mean, it just didn't look like much, but watch him keep those feet and he just shoots forward. And another first down on this drive. First and 10 from the 24. They're starting back at the 11. They had the early Maple Grove defensive penalty. And have moved nicely down on the field, mostly on the ground of the one big pass play for a first down. They'll go to the air again. Now flushed out of the pocket and keeping it will be Bartle. And Bartle will get inside the 20 down to the 17. And Bannock on the tackle, but not before the Knights quarterback had gained seven yards. Yeah, and I think that was a pass play and a quick decision making too by Bartle. I think he saw right away to the left. No one was had contained and there was no one over there. Just took off, didn't hesitate. Again, you pick up seven yards on first down. That's a win. Second down and three for STMA. From the 17 of Maple Grove. Kadia inside and stood up at the 15 and driven back. Urbanic in on a lot of stops, yeah. makes another tackle. And that time they came with 
some some blitzes right up the middle with their linebackers kind of stuff their hole nowhere to go for Kadia. Gave him a little yardage to old yeah. will bring up uh, a third and two third maybe and third two. And one yeah. And this is where we, we saw Bartle quarterback sneak earlier on a short down and distance. Bartle will hand off this time, and it'll be a first down. Graybo on the tackle to get down to the 13-yard line. So a nice mix between yep. Kadia, Graybo, the quarterback Bartle, and that rushing game is doing its job here on that line and moving the, yep. the Maple Grove defense back and giving that yep. backfield opportunities to run. Yeah, and again, not big chunk plays, right? But just winning every play. An offensive line doing a great job up front, just giving enough space to get the momentum, get down the field. Ball at the 13, back to Graybo again. Inside the 10, there's four more yards. Second and six from the Maple Grove nine. Now look at how much time is oh, run off the clock here say, in the that's, quarter. That's the key, right? If you score too quick, and then you got to defend a pretty potent offense here. This kind of methodical drive Number one, it gives you defense rest. Number two, it keeps Maple Grove's offense off the field. And it's kind of demoralizing too when you don't give up big plays and it's just a slow pounding away on it too. So exactly the kind of drive they want, but now you got to finish it. When you get in the red zone, you got to be able to finish it. On second down and six, Bartle straight up the middle, get a push from behind and a great push up front. He gets all the way to the four. It'll be third down and one. Yeah, and you can kind of tell when, when Bartle's going to quarterback sneak, John, you're going you're to see his back right foot is back further. He's getting ready to, to move forward. But smart play. Again, nothing fancy, but just moving that pile forward, picking up four, four or five yards there. You see the Eagles run that push play. You get those running backs behind you pushing forward. Third and short. Bartle will give, Graybo's got it, and it'll be first down yep. and goal for the Knights from the one. Did nothing fancy, nothing big, just a good push. Those big guys up front. All those squats and all those lifting in the offseason, that's what you do it for. Can you get that push when you need a yard? And they, on this drive, they certainly are getting that extra push and getting those extra yards. First and goal from the one. That's a sneak here, foot's back. Bardo will indeed run, he'll get pushed from behind. He's into the end zone for a touchdown. Yep. He emerges from that pile with the football and STMA what a has drive. tied it up on yeah. a great drive. 89 yard drive. They got seven first downs in that drive. Yeah, how many plays, John? That had to be about 15 plays, too. And you talked about their balance, right? I mean, great balance. We saw quarterback sneaks with Bartho, a couple runs by him. We saw Kadia with a couple of runs. We, we also saw Graybo with some nice runs. We saw the, the play action to Drew Luster. So, really good balance on that play. Ooh, Extra missed, point yeah. is missed wide to the right from. The kicker Tish, and so we are tied 6 6 with 2.57 to go in the first half. And that's a confidence booster type of a drive, right? That's, it's not a freak play or a trick play or a big play. It's just a methodical, you know, we're going to, you know what we're going to do? Can you stop it? And that's one of those drives, too, that your offense can build on, right? Like, guys, you can do it. You've proven it. You can do it. The yep. offensive line did a terrific they job. Did. Sipple, Bramos, Dewar, Zimmer, Escobar. You know, push really on virtually every play. Well, and, and, and the key was no negative plays. They they didn't they never once faced a third and long, right? They, every drive was a couple yards or positive yards on first down. They either picked up the first down on second down or set up a third and really short. So they, they just kept positive plays and compounding them on each other and 
The ball is tipped by one of the up backs and then picked up by Langama. 25 30 yard line. He'll get a return all the way out near the 45 yard line. So Maple Grove, it's a good kick return here, Ryan, with 2.50 to go, one timeout remaining. And they'll have the ball near their 45. Yeah, big return there. And, that, and that's the thing, Maple Grove just saw their defense, you know, be on the field for that long. You know, this offense wants to get out here and see if they can answer quickly. Return of 24 yards. First and 10 Maple Grove from their 44. Under three minutes to play in the half. And remember too, they only have one timeout. Had to use two timeouts there in the first quarter. But good return, short field here. Plenty of time. Vocal on the direct snap. He will turn, then he will keep it, and he will maybe get back to the line of scrimmage. Tackle made by Zach Purcell. Yeah, nice job by Purcell staying home. Tried a little misdirection there. Wanted the defense to flow, you know, to the right side of the offense there with Vocal coming back left. And a good job by Purcell snuffing it out and staying home. Second down and 10 from the 44. Clock running to 20 to go here in the half. In a 6 6 game. Unbalance here to the right. Yep. This time Langama on the direct snap. 50 yard line. He's in the open. Chuck Langama oh, fumbles both. the football. I think he got it, John. And he's able to get it back at yeah. the 23 yard line. He keeps possession for the Crimson. Well, and that's the thing you, you worry about with a wet ball. So they went unbalanced, John, which means they had more blockers on that right side. Look at that speed there. Nice job punching it out. And sometimes this game is about luck, right? Where does it bounce? Great punch out by the Knights. Almost able to get that, but a heads up play by Langama to get on top of it. And a timeout now for STMA. The first down and 10 for Maple Grove. Langama now. Ryan, 12 carries for 132 yards and a touchdown. Yeah, slow night for him. Yeah. <laughs> That's a good game for a lot of people. But you think about that, right? I mean, after a big run like that, you knock the ball out. If the Knights were able to get that ball back before half, but it kind of bounced right back up to him and he heads up play by, by Chuck there to get on top of it. Ryan Iverson is going to move down out of our nice dry booth just to interview the coaches at half. There must be hazard pay uh, <laughs> in this game tonight. <laughs> that, that looks miserable out there. Oh, shout out to all our camera people working out in the elements too. It is not a fun night. Now, not the storms we had two weeks ago when we were at White's out of the Eden Prairie game, but it's going to be a, a steady rain like this all night. Well, it shows what I know. Remember when they called that, John? I said to you, I go, we'll be back here in a half hour. Right. And then within 10 minutes, it was like a tornado out there. That, that was bad. He ended up resuming the next day, and well, Eden Prairie were good in the part of the game we saw, and they came it, back and really finished it off on that Saturday. I'll tell you, you know, the last few years when we've watched teams, like when Wyzetta won it a few years ago, I kind of knew when we saw them, like, that's the team. Maple Grove last year, I knew, remember I said to you right away, that's the team. Like, everything I've seen this year, I think Eden Prairie is the team. Just the way their offense and defense align really just controlled that game. You know, not saying they can't be beat. I don't think it's an unbeatable team, but they're the team to beat. They are the team to yeah. beat. It's just a, just the way that they can control the line of scrimmage. And I would bet, you know, Maple Grove certainly talented enough this year to do it. But I would not want to see this Maple Grove team in a year when some of these sophomores that are still in their first year get a little bit bigger, stronger, another year of experience. Maple Grove is going to be one of those teams for the next couple of years. He had to get the clock set. Vocal again on the direct snap from the 23. He'll hand off, cutting inside is Stang. Henry oh. Stang to the 20, to the 15 yard line, and gets down to the 14. He's inbounds. It'll be a gain of nine, second down and one on Stang's second carry tonight. Yeah, and pretty crafty too. Watch his footwork in and out. Read his blocks perfectly. You see, it looks like he's going in. Look at him pop back out. And a Great job holding blocks too down the field. 
He gave to Lungama, did not get much. And I don't know if he got enough for the first down. It's going to be a little bit short. And it'll bring up third down here for Maple Grove. Kevin Damer on the stop. Clock running. Third down, and they go to Vocal. He's got a first down. Down to the 10 yard line. Looks like this will be, well, just maybe just outside the 10. I don't know if it'll be first and goal or first and 10. It'll be close regardless. The clock had stopped, had stopped in the stadium. Now it's back running. I mean, we're under a minute to go. There you see it. Well, it's skipping numbers. It's uh, uh, it's not working right. The ball is fumbled in the backfield, picked back up by Langama, and trying to get something out of this. Gets a little push from his line and is able to get a positive gain down to the eight yard line. Looked like that was going to go for a loss. Ends up getting about a two yard gain. And yeah, we we'll look at it again. Second time that we've had a fumble on this drive, and neither one lost for the Crimson. Clock continuing to run. Vocal is going to give to Stang. He's got a little scene there. Now cuts it back up the middle and gets down to the two yard line. And Maple Grove will use its final timeout. And I have no idea how much time is actually left. We have 18 in our truck. We had a minute on the. We had eight. We had three seconds on the clock, 20 seconds. Who's to say? They're putting up. Uh, now they're just running down the time within the timeout. And so uh, I'm sure the Crimson would like to know exactly how much time they have remaining here. The ball is on the two yard line after the run by Stang. It didn't quite get to the end zone. But they are Crimson out of timeouts here. Uh, third down play coming. Now I think there's uh, looks like what 2.8 on the clock. That what we're going to settle on. So this is it. You get one shot at it here to get it into the end zone, or it ends six six. It's a big play really for both teams. Knights coming back after getting. Punched in that first two and a half minutes on the quick strike opening drive for Maple Grove. And they come back with a long drive that took up most of this quarter, get six points, and now Maple Grove trying to answer in the final play of the half from the two yard line. Enough. Coach Lombardi's asking how much time is actually left. Now they say six seconds. It looked like that's what the official was signaling. Regardless, even if it's six seconds, he really only got one play. The scoreboard's still reading 2.8, so we'll go with that. You know, you can see the referee in the right of your screen signaling six. Now we got it up on the board. It's chaos in the press box. And now SDMA takes time out. <laughs> well, we'll get things straightened out here. And uh, the Knights, Jared Essler kind of saw what was coming perhaps for Maple Grove and talked to his defense. And again, after that first drive, it's played pretty good football giving up some yardage certainly and now trying to keep this good Maple Grove offense out of the end zone before we get to halftime. Hope you're enjoying tonight's coverage. Those of you who could make it or <laughs> chose not to make it because of the weather. We appreciate your watching and supporting CCX coverage of high school football tonight. Week seven up here in St. Michael. Two games next week on CCX and over at Armstrong on Wednesday. 
And then uh, NBA Thursday, Anoka at Wyzetta. It's a 5 p.m. kickoff a week from today. Ryan Iverson is headed down to the field. We'll hear from both uh, Coach Essler and Coach Lombardi before the start of the second half. Line of scrimmage is the three-yard line. So here we go. Harney back in at quarterback. So Volk will take quite a few snaps, but now it's Harney. Harney will roll out and whistle. Do we get we got another STMA timeout? They'll burn their last time out here. <laughs> Do they get another look at uh, Maple Grove? This is like the fourth quarter of an NBA game. The timeouts here late in the half. You see the wind, you can tell the see the rain coming into your living room or your device you're watching tonight. And strong wind right now. You can see blowing uh, behind Maple Grove offense. Let's see what the Crimson dial up here and the SDMA trying to counter here on what should be. Now, if it's an incompletion, Maple Grove would have time for perhaps one more play, depending on how long this uh, develops. They go back to the direct snap. It's fumbled and doesn't really matter. Recovers it at this point. That is going to be the end of the half. STMA does come out of there with the football, and we will go to halftime tied up at six. Look at it again. Vocal just never quite got it and recovered again. It doesn't didn't really matter and half comes to an end. So it's a 6-6 game here at the half. No, let's do it. Well, maybe there's still a little time left. I thought that was the final play. Clock read zeros but perhaps did not take the full six seconds. Now I can't imagine SDMA will do anything other than kneel down here, but apparently there will be a time for one last play. So unless you University of Miami it here and hand off and fumble, this should be the last play of the half. We get a little movement on the line. There we go. And now it is halftime. Good comeback by the home team. Put up a long drive and six points. And we are tied up 6-6 at halftime. The Knights and the Crimson. Maple Grove going for their fifth consecutive win. The Knights going for their fourth win in the last five games. And a good job by that offense directed by Will Bartle. What's going on the field? Ryan standing by with Jared Essler. Coach, how big was that stop there right before the half? Really big, you know. Um, handling the ball is really tough, you know. The the kicks, you know, both teams are 0 for 3 in the kicking game, and uh, the turnovers are going to tell the battle. We've got to find a way to hang on to the football and, and take it away. I was so impressed with your drive. I don't know how many plays, seven or eight first downs on that sustain. You keep their offense on the field. How big was that drive that you guys had? It's big, and, and, and we told them 18 plays, 95 yards. So we're, yeah. we're pretty proud of them, and we need to see more of that in the second half. Coach, you're known as being a tough guy, but be honest, are you going to put more layers on here at halftime? Uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Coach. Back to you, JJ. Thanks to Coach Essler. We'll hear from Coach Lombardi before the start of the second half. Rainy night for football here in St. Michael. We're tied up. Knights in the Crimson, 6-6.
Maple Grove 6, St. Michael Albertville 6, halftime. High school football tonight from St. Michael Albertville High School. John Jacobson, Ryan Iverson, all of our courageous crew. More courageous than Ryan and I here in the press box. Although Ryan ventured out there, Sean. Yeah, don't halftime. include me with, with that. I was out in the elements, but I, we need to give uh, all of our people outside a raise after tonight. It is cold and windy. I can see why they missed those extra points to the right because it was very strong left to right win there. Let's look at highlights from the first half in Maple Grove looking very strong on that opening yeah. drive, Ryan. Amy, they moved down in a hurry, starting with the, the first, first play, play of the game, yep. the rollout and the strike from Caden Hardy to uh, to Dylan Vogel. That covered 33 yards, and Maple Grove was off and running on that opening drive. Chuck Langama on the handoff and the direct snap into the end zone for his 21st rushing touchdown on Maple Grove. Missed the extra point there on top, just 208 into the game. And then uh, defense could play there on the pass breakup by Maple Grove's uh, Brayden Dozier. And then STMA starting to get to the running game of going a little bit there in the second quarter. Yep. This was that very long drive, which took over nine minutes on the clock. The one pass play that went, and then the rushing touchdown on the end by Bartle, the quarterback, and then Vocal fumbling on that third and goal, and STMA recovering and getting the ball back to end the first half. And I thought that was a big play, Ryan, that instead of getting a, a touchdown perhaps to close the half, yep. Maple Grove turns it over, and although they're dominating in, in total yards, Tied, we're tied up at six. Well, and, and almost all those yards came on that one drive right. for the night. So yeah. Maple Grove really had shut them down. It looked in that first quarter, John, that Maple Grove might be able to, you know, put up a couple score lead there. But I'll tell you what, the Knights have, have given up yards, but they haven't bent and, and broken in the in the red zone defensively. Come up with a couple of big stops, and I'm telling you, that kind of a drive that they had, where they sustained and, and picked up, a, you know, seven or eight first downs on that drive. That, that's a a championship type drive and I think it instilled confidence in their defense and uh, they're going to go into the locker room they're getting the ball first to start the second half too so I think they have a lot of confidence that they can win this game 6-6 six, six, the Crimson and the Knights more prep football in the rain on CCX in a moment CCX Media, your source for great local programming, is available on Amazon Fire TV, Apple TV, and Roku. Our free app allows you to stream all three of our channels live. You also have access to a large on-demand library, including full sporting events and daily newscasts. To find us, go to the store, search CCX, and download our free app. Then sit back and enjoy all of your favorite local content. The CCX Media app, available on Amazon Fire TV, Apple TV, and Roku. Six six at halftime. The Crimson and the Knights back to the field. We'll go Ryan Iverson with Maple Grove head coach Matt Lombardi. Coach, you and I talked before the game. You said you knew, you thought you were going to be in for a dog fight, and that's exactly what we had in the first half. What were your thoughts? Yeah, they've been playing really well lately, and they're they're a bunch of senior kids, so they got a lot of kids back. So I knew it was going to be a hard fight, and they they kind of took it to us with about a nine minute drive there that kind of stemmed the tide. So I think offensively, we had two possessions down inside the ten where we came away with zero, and that can't happen. And so both sides got to step up. It's a fun game. We're going to be all right. This first drive coming out defensively, hopefully we can stand up a little bit to their power and then get our offense back. In the field but we'll be all right you never make excuses with the weather but obviously it's cold windy wet uh, offensively do you do anything different do you tell them anything different with the conditions no I think we got to learn how to play in this kind of conditions I think when you get to playoff football it gets like this every now and then so it obviously made a difference we're having some trouble with their snaps and things like that but I think um they have the same conditions we do, so there's no excuses. We just got to learn how to play in it better. Last question, what do you guys have to do to win this game? Um, just do our, get back to what we do, win possession by possession, get get them off the field and then get the offense to score and then get them off the field and kind of get the flow of a game going again. I think if we do that, we'll be all right. And, and so they're a good team. We'll have to play, but I think if we get back to doing our stuff, we'll be fine. Yeah, thanks, Coach. Good luck in the second half. Back to you, JJ. Thanks to our coaches, Ryan will make his way back up here for the start of the second half. Maple Grove 6, St. Michael Alberville 6. More football in CCX in a moment. CCX Media is the first place you go for local news and sports. 
but did you know you can sign up for those stories to go straight to your inbox on our website? Simply go to ccxmedia.org. Click on the subscribe button and from there choose which notifications you want to receive. Then we'll send your favorite CCX Media news, sports, and city events straight to your inbox. Sign up now at ccxmedia.org. Six six Maple Grove STMA one half of football to go tonight and a quick moving first half. You get a lot of running plays. It total throws in that first half were seven. And everything else came on the ground, and the Knights will receive the opening kickoff here in the second half. Ryan, you're back. I'm you're back. Dry. You're not warm, <laughs> but <laughs> a brief. Outside uh, time for you froze you a little bit, I think. Well, I think when you get wet and then you get that wind on yes. you too. And John, I'm not as tough as I used to be either. Seavers with a kickoff. We are underway in the second half of a tie game. Whistle offside, offside uh, in the kickoff for Maple Grove. See that often. Fourth oh. penalty of the night for the Crimson. or Ramonka rather a little bit off or was offside there. It doesn't matter if you're a little bit offside, yeah, you're offside, yeah. right? You always wonder as a ref, like, just let it go. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> like, let's get the, let's get the clock going here. <laughs> yeah, interesting to see kind of what adjustments are made by both sides. You've got to remember the Knights are coming off that big drive. Do they do anything different? Are they able to Continue to win first and second down. That was really the key of that drive. Crimson pretty well had Soltamacchio wrapped up <laughs> and he fights for another six yards or so or eight yards perhaps well, out past the 25. And, and you love that, right? But then when the ball's wet, you think as a coach like, oh, just hang on to that football. You saw Maple Grove trying to dig at that ball. That'll be the key, I think, in the second half, right? Uh, who, who can, you know, take care of the football, too? And Maple Grove fumbled three times on that final drive, losing the last one yep. uh, at the end of the half. Well, STMA had that long drive in the second quarter. They got them tied. Let's see how they do on this drive, starting from their 26-yard line. Bartol take the pitch, he'll hand throw, or keep the ball, rather, and he'll go up the middle, and Maple Grove was ready for him, and there's no gain. And I'm telling you, those are the keys, that, that first down. You got to remember, on that drive, every first down the Knights, John had a minimum of three or four yards. I mean, right here, about a half a yard for Bartle. Yeah, and we saw those first couple of drives the Knights had of the game, third and long, third and 10, third and 12, right? And, and that, it's a completely different ball game in those situations. So if you're the Knights, you just keep it simple and just keep getting, winning the line of scrimmage hard running like they did on that drive. On second down and still close to 10 to go. Bartle wants to throw as protection, throws out nice. to his right, gets the completion near the first down marker, perhaps a yard short. And it's a gain of eight on the catch made by Riley Hiltner, his first catch tonight. Yeah, a nice throw. Watch him plant his feet here. That's a long throw across the field. You can see a good. He got his legs, he was able to drive that ball in, right? Perfect location and a big pickup. Again, now you're in that third and short, that third and manageable. That's what we saw them do a lot. Their third down conversion rate was 100% on that drive. And it was because they were in third and short. Third and one here. See if the quarterback keeps it. Instead, he'll give to Kadia, oh. and he got spun around. Oh, well, he might have got him with the effort, push. Second effort might get him the first down, and definitely is yep. on the third effort. Gets out to the 37-yard line, and picks up two. He did not have it initially. Oh. And, it, and it's funny too. Some refs are quick to blow the whistle right on, uh, on the, to end the play. You watch Maple Grove does a nice job of just kind of jamming that middle of nowhere to go. You see those legs driving, and then it kind of becomes that old rugby push, right? You see some blue come in there and push them forward. 
And again, a third down conversion, third and short, third and manageable. First and 10, STMA from their 37. Bartle looking to throw. Now he's going to keep it and run it. 40 yard line to the 45 and out to the 47, maybe the 48 yard line. He'll get another first down for the Knights and the keeper. Yeah, and I think that was a designed run. He, he made it look like it was passing, but I saw the receivers down the field. They were setting to block, kind of walling off the edge here. You see everyone sprinting out to the left, trying to seal really well blocked down the field, too. Gain of 11. He's got 45 yards rushing and eight carries and a touchdown. And pretty big chunk plays. A couple of quarterback sneaks, but a couple where he's been able to get to the outside and get, get big plays. From the 48, Bartle the throw, quick throw, gets the completion into Crimson territory. Jordan Holm with his first catch tonight. Picks up four yards to the Maple Grove 48. Yeah, Jordan, a big target, six foot five, good basketball player that time. Nice crisp route, good throw. And you gotta be really, I mean, impressed with Will Bartle tonight, putting the ball right on the money. And again, nothing fancy, but you pick up five yards on first down. 10th catch of the year for him. Second down and six. Now into Crimson Territory. Bartle will keep again. He's got a first down inside the 40 to the 39 yard line. Tackled from behind by Urbanic. Yeah, I don't know if you saw that, John, but you could see the edges were closing in on Bartle and he took off just in the nick of time. And it's a pretty good burst of acceleration there, going from zero to to upfield pretty quick because he did not have a lot of room, but he hit that hole hard. Close to 10 yards on that play. First and 10 from the 38. And Maple Grove defense again struggling to stop STMA. Second drive in a row. This has happened, and this time, as I see that, they get the stop and driving the running back back. Raybo had no shot on that. I think initial contact came from Weigel, but he had help in a hurry. You know, one, one. one thing I'm seeing a lot tonight, John, that I, I got to commend both teams. You're seeing good, hard football, good hits. They are immediately trying to help the other team up. Both teams are doing it. I love that sportsmanship. You're playing hard. Obviously, you want to win. You want to hit the other guy hard, but but really good sportsmanship, both sides here. Loss of two back to the 40, second down and 12. On count by Bartle, wants to throw, short throw, gets the completion. Dozier on the coverage of Holm, who does make the catch, his second on this drive. And I'll tell you, those short timing throws like that, it's basically like running the football, right? It's a quick, easy throw for your quarterback. It's safe, and it's just a different way to kind of pick up four or five yards, and they picked up a little bit of that yardage back. Now, again, you're third and a little bit longer, but it's still manageable, and you're probably in four-down territory now on this side of the field. On third down and eight, Bartle. Is going to keep and gets to the 31 yard line. He's going to be short of the first down. Crimson finally turn him sideways. It'll be fourth down and about two, maybe two and a half yards to go for the Knights. And it just doesn't look like there's much there, does it, John? It looks like he was running right into a bunch of white jerseys and somehow squeaks through a tiny hole and, and just hits it hard and again picks up chunk. He, Fourth and manageable here. A little bit longer than a yard where we've seen the quarterback sneaks, but. Fourth down, a long two for the Knights. Gonna go with a hard count, see if they can get a, an easy first down. Grimson don't bite. Bardo now back out away again. And now we get a timeout taken by the Knights. Yeah, see, I don't. I, I don't know if I like that you waste a timeout, right? Especially in a close game where you might want that timeout. That's one of those where I, I go with a hard count. If I don't get it, I have a play called or, you know, I don't know if they're planning to go for it or not. If you're, if you're planning to punt, then you just take the penalty, right? Yeah, I can't imagine this deep they're going to punt in this, uh, in this yeah. position. It's, I just four, say, it's a long, it's closer to three, three. than it is to two. But that's where you, you got to just you got to have the play and just run it. I, I, I think you've got to save the timeouts, especially the way this game is going, where you could see it coming down to, 
you know, the last couple of minutes of drive, he wanting to be able to stop the clock. And you saw STMA utilize, you know, how many timeouts there on that last drive defensively, seeing something that maybe they didn't like and, and making sure they were in the right defensive setup and, and positioning too. So you, you want to try to hold on to those timeouts, but maybe also recognizing this is an important drive too. Make sure they get the right play called here to keep the chains moving. So here we go, fourth down and three to go. Bartle up under center. He is going to roll out. Pressure throws, and it's intercepted. Yes, hung on to. Almost dropped, but hanging on to it on fourth down is Bold Theme. Oh, the soft the sophomore yeah. with the pick and the first turnover for STMA tonight. Yeah, and I don't necessarily put that on Bartle. He was under a, I mean, a rocket shot out at him. He was under pressure, had to get rid of it a little bit early. And there was no one there. Great one-handed catch, too, in the in the wet. I couldn't see who got the pressure on. So he forced to definitely have That's to a, throw that. Look at that catch. It you know. was Drehine that was coming in. And Thien also went between his legs on the play, too, after he caught it. One more look at it. Yeah, it's Drake yeah. that came loose. But watch this one hander right here. He goes between the leg to, to hang on to it. That's not easy to do. Back to oh. live action. Look who's got the ball. Lingama down the sideline, stumbling before he's knocked out of bounds at the 13 yard line. Well, and that's what a fourth down stop can do. Just just like St. Michael Alberville's drive kind of re energized their team, you get a stop on fourth and short, it re energizes their whole team. John, were you surprised on the play call on that fourth down? <laughs> uh, not necessarily, no. Look at the run again. He breaks the tackle yeah. there, and then off he goes. He might knocked out of bounds at the 23, so they got not quite as far as I initially thought. And then let's see a gain of, gain of 42, though, for number 21. Yeah, he's just got that big play ability, right? Every time he touches it, you feel like he could take it all the way. And even again, yeah. breaks a tackle in the backfield inside the 20 in a good first down run for Langama of seven yards here. You know, when you, you look at the stats, you see seven yards versus that last play, which was much longer, but that seven yard run was, was pretty amazing. He made a guy miss again in the backfield. He's got great footwork. I think that's the biggest improvement he's made from that game one we did in the season opener against Osseo. Seeing the way he can make guys miss and find his spots and just kind of to make something out of nothing. Pretty impressive. 181 yards rushing now on 16 carries. Second down and five from the 19. They'll give it to him again. Nice. And this time grabbed around the ankles nope. right as he got the ball and there'll be no gain. Yeah, and I, you know, that's what you almost got to do. If you can't get a clean shot of him, but you can grab a hold of his legs, that's where his power and explosiveness really comes from. That was a really nice tackle. I couldn't see. I think it was Drew Luster, number eight, coming down from the defensive end to make that play. Third and five. Five and a half minutes to go in a quick moving third quarter. Six six game. Arnie up under center. Fakes the handoff, rolls out right. Arnie going to the end zone, and it is caught for a touchdown. It's Nathan Romatka, the tight end, with the catch, and Maple Grove goes back in front. Oh, how about that call? Play action. You get your sophomore quarterback, Caden Harney. Hasn't thrown a ton tonight. Wet ball. And he puts it right on the money. It helps too when you got a big target like Romadka at six foot six. And what a catch too. He took a hit at the end of that, he able to hang on to it even with the wet ball. You get the fourth down stop and big running play by get down the field and finish it off. That's how you cap off a drive. And we get our first successful yep. kick tonight. We had a missed field goal, two missed extra points. And now the extra point by Sievers makes it 13 to six in favor of the Crimson. I'll tell you what, when you can run the football successfully, play action works. You know, we saw that for years with the Vikings, with Adrian Peterson, but fake the handoff. Great patience too by the young quarterback, Harney, allowing that play to develop. And how about Romadka? John, watch the hit he takes after, after he gets his hands on this. Remember, that's a wet football. 
Doesn't have it clean there and to hang on to it there even with that contact. That was just a great, great play. Yeah, he had to, he, he had to grab it a second time. After and his hit, it, yeah. Right? I mean, yeah. the concentration that that takes. It's a big time catch, big time throw, big time catch. So Crimson go back in front. They get the turnover on the interception by Thien and the huge run by Langama for 42 yards. A couple plays later, they in the in the end zone and back in front. The STMA on the return. It's Saltomacchio got hit and won't get to the 20 yard line this time. It was Brody Berglund might have been the first one to make contact. Well, I'll tell you what, football, is, especially at high school, is such a game of momentum, right? Maple Grove had it to start the game. STMA snatched it back. And then just like that, Maple Grove gets all the momentum. And this is where the Knights have to respond with another one of those drives. It's hard, though, when you don't have that huge play capability, right, John? When you got to sustain drives like that repeatedly. Let's see if STMA can pop one here. Inside their 20. Now trailing by a touchdown. And Gadia is hit. And will, won't get much. Get a couple of yards before he's brought down. Yeah, Ethan Barry, nice job from the defensive end there. 55. You know, the D line for Maple Grove always doesn't get a ton of credit because their job necessarily isn't always to make tackles, it's to eat up blockers. So they have they've always had a really good linebacker core who can run well. That time Barry sheds his block, makes a really nice play. Gain of two, second down and eight. Bartle looked out and then there runs up the middle and Dreheim <laughs> drops him. That was a bad 23. Battle of number sevens there. I like that play. You get the motion to the right. It looks like it's going to be a quick bubble screen out to the right. And quarterback keeps it. But Dreheim, Dreheim's really had a, a good game tonight defensively. He's been involved in a lot of a lot of tackles. Got five yards. And it's third down and three for the Knights. Little chess game here. See the Knights audibly in the play, and then Maple Grove also responding here. Play clock down to five. Bartle, roll out, throws, and incomplete. Vocal on the coverage, and the intended receiver was home. Or excuse me, Aggie. And it's fourth down for the Knights. Yeah, I could tell if Aggie slipped on that one or if the ball was behind him. The Knights audible into the play. They saw something they liked here rolling to the right. Let's just see. Yeah, the ball was oh, behind yeah, just him. Just a little bit behind him. And pretty good coverage, too. It wasn't like anyone wide open. So Maple Grove, again, get the interception, touchdown. Now they get another stop. Luster on for his third punt tonight. So I'll take a Knights so bounce hit, again that? down to the 36. Knights think it went off a Maple Grove player. I, say, did it. I don't know if it hit. We're going to nope. give it to uh, Maple Grove. Or Panic looked like it was the player that was closest to it. Well, and that's one of those where, as a punt returner, you're yelling fire, get away from it. Ooh. I think that hit his chin strap, didn't it? Sure looked like it. You see that ball kind of bounce right up into it. It looked like his chin or face mask. Well, the Knights fans didn't like it. The players right on the field, they they saw it right away. Yeah. And I think they were pretty certain. Well, good thing we don't have the challenge flag. <laughs> we might be thrown here. Well, Maple Grove gets the ball from their 36. Harney rollout, a little pressure, throws the vocal, oh, oh, oh. makes the com yeah. completion. That looked dangerous, didn't it? Caught makes the completion and he gains well, five yards on it. it it's a, you see that play a lot in the pros, right? Where you got the the guy coming from opposite underneath there and it's a timing play and you can tell that they practice that a lot because he threw that blindly just knowing vocal was going to be there. The ball hung in the air a little bit. Kind of a dangerous play, but they picked up six yards on it. So good play action, right? Second and four. Arnie tonight four of six passing and a touchdown. Not run the ball tonight. 
And off one Gamay into the secondary and into St. Michael Albertville territory down to the 45. Well, they don't need him to run when you got that guy, when you got 21 behind you. But I, I, I like what Coach Lombardi's doing. He's adding some motion, pre-snap motion. And that time they brought Dylan Volko across, who's gotten the ball tonight on a few rushes too. And it's just enough, just a half a second, if it can freeze those linebackers or or those safeties, just enough. And you can see, you know, when, when Lagama gets uh, just an ounce of a hole, he makes something happen. Give to Stang this front this time. Henry Stang will cut it back to his left. Oh, wow. oh he's got some room that way. Oh, and yeah, a lot of running to get three yards, but he does get a positive gain out of it down to uh, maybe closer to the 41 yard line. I've gotten four there. Yeah, well defended by the Knights. Nowhere to go here on that end around. You can see just a wall of blue defenders. And generally, when you bring it back across the field, it doesn't work out well, but able to get some positive yards there. The well defended by that night defense. Second down and six from the 41. Knights need to stop here. You know, we talk a lot about the Knights having to win first and second down. Same with Maple Grove. They're able to get four or five here. It's it's a it's a win. Oh, Langama fumbles it on the uh. toss back. Does get back on top of it though. It'll be a loss of five on the play though and it'll set up third and 11. I could tell if the pitch was was bad or Magama didn't have his hands out and ready but he got that wet football. Fourth fumble for Maple Grove but they've been fortunate to only lose one. Knights have taken care of the football though tonight as far as fumbling. We're under a minute to go in the third. Fans have stuck around. Students for sure. On both sides. Third and 11 for Maple Grove from the 46. Harney steps into his throw and is incomplete. The ball looks like it hit the turf intended for Volkel. Saltomacchio on the coverage. And it's fourth down and Maple Grove will have to punt. Yeah, and that's okay. That's a good, that's where you want to miss that throw, short into the outside. You don't want to throw it inside or long where it can be picked off. Vocal did a nice job as a receiver. That's what you want to do is come back to the football. See him come back here. Well, Ooh. punt or no punt, or are we have another quick kick we had before. Yep. And I think that's what we're going to indeed have. Oh, and this one yeah. only gets to the line of scrimmage, got blocked there and then handled by Vocal, down by Vocal to 42. So that really didn't work out. One goes for four yards, and yeah. the Knights get the ball on the other side of the 40. Yeah, and I think Caden Harney's just got to get about another two yards deeper on that. He's only at about five or six yards, and by the time that you get a push with that defensive line, those linemen are, are back two yards. He just needed one more yard of depth, and he would have got that off. Knights hold, yep. and they get it back at their 42. Yep. Late here in the third quarter, trailing by a touchdown. Big drive here. Bartle, play action. Deep drop has time to throw, goes deep over the middle, and it's caught. Oh, wow. Down to the 10 yard line. That's Owen Aggie on the catch. That's a 48 yard gain for the Knights. Well, I'll tell you what, I think that play, Aggie was designed to go deep on the left side, and there was some pressure, and so Bartle had to kind of reset, and Aggie did a great job of bringing the ball across the field. And that's just a good job by the quarterback and receiver to kind of improvise there. Aggie with really good speed, able to get deep, get behind that defender. And first, a nice throw by Bartle. First and goal right from the 10 yard line of Maple Grove. And now the Knights. And a way to get that win, maybe? Oh. Take a timeout here. So. STMA back in scoring position. Well, these teams uh, have played several years in a row. This was last year's regular season meeting in uh, mid-October. It was week seven a year ago. Again at STMA, Jacob Kilzer, of course, the quarterback last year for the state champion 
Crimson, what a night he had. 224 yards rushing and three TDs in that game. And he was such a dangerous weapon on offense. Good throw and pass. It, Defense was solid all season for Maple Grove. Jackson Powers with the interception there to stop a drive. And then Sam Kleiber with a pass breakup there. All those guys in college sports right now. Yeah. Jacob Kilzer, a redshirt year at Air Force yeah. Academy. Jackson Powers at the U of M, a redshirt. And Sam Kleiber is playing baseball up at Minnesota Duluth. I'll tell you what, you watch that team and you just see the swagger that that group had, right? It was just a confidence. You know, they were in that prep ball as a junior, and you could tell they just had a ton of confidence last year. Felt like they were the best team, and, and they were. First and goal from the 10. Picking oh, a hole the up ground. the middle and to the three-yard line, and looked like getting back to it was Graybo, and it's second down and goal from the three. And remember, he really sparked them on that touchdown drive they had. Remember, he got the ball quite a bit, picked up some first downs with runs just like that. Tough runs up the middle where he just kept those legs churning. That is the end of the third quarter. Knights driving, they trail it. We go to a four that's 13-6, Maple Grove. Six Maple Grove leads St. Michael Albertville. But the Knights on a second down play coming up. We'll have the ball at the Maple Grove three yard line. That ball on that last play, as you saw going to break there, Grabo bounced right back to him, yep. Ryan. And uh, well, I called fumble during the run, and then I thought maybe I, I didn't, but I, that ball fell, and you could see it on the, on the replay there. It, it definitely bounced. Fortunate to, to stay on it. Bartle will hand off. It's Grabo yeah. into the end zone for a touchdown. The Knights a point away from tying it up. Yeah, nice run there. He just kind of sidestepped laterally to get to the outside and able to just power his way into the end zone. And how about that drive again off the big play? We just talked about, John, that STMA needs a, an explosive play, and they got it in the pass game on that long throw to Aggie. That's a big response. Yeah, they're they're, they're they gonna go for two in. here. Yeah, they're gonna go like for it. two in the lead. Bartle up under center, trying to go up 14-13 here at the beginning of the fourth quarter. Make Maple Grove score to come back. He'll throw. He's got uh, a man open and yeah. wide open for the two-point conversion. Now, when you go for two like that without a question, it means you got a great play that you love for a two-point conversion. Drew play Luster. Yeah. Play action to the right. You send the tight end on the right side, coming back to the left, wide open. STMA takes the lead. Yeah, love Look at that. The touchdown first. Yeah. And I think that touchdown was really that, the, that lateral move he had out to the right. And here's the what happens is you get the luster at right tight end just coming right across the field. Every the flow of the play, everyone's coming to the right. Luster leaks out to the left. Easy throw, easy catch, great call. Fired up. Knights in front for the first time. Four seconds in <laughs> to the uh, fourth quarter. 14-13 STMA. I think he's fired up. I think so. Touchdown there by number 23, Grabo, and then the two-point conversion, Bartle Luster. Oh, how about Drew Luster? We've seen him punt the ball defensively. He's had a good game and big couple of big catches, too. Line drive kick handled at the 25-yard line. Myron Brannick, he gets it out 
to the 35 on a night where it's more like hockey weather. I'm going to mention this at the Minnesota Wild playing their season opener tonight at home. First goal of the season scored by Maple Grove's Brock Favor. Nice. Played freshman football at Maple Grove, then went on to concentrate on hockey, and I think it's turned out pretty well for him. 21 year old rookie defenseman for the Wild out of Maple Grove and gets the first oh, goal. What a dream. You play for your hometown team in your first game, you get a, a goal too. That's pretty, pretty unbelievable. So Maple Grove, who isn't trailed much this season, trails here early in the fourth quarter. And they give to Langama. And a rare time he has stopped for no gain. They'll give him a yard, and that's uh, probably generous to give a yard to the 36. Well, he's just one of those guys that I think you'll see a lot of him on this drive, right? We've seen Maple Grove run some stuff for, for other people. I think when, when it's go time, you give him multiple chances, you feel like one out of three, he's gonna break it, at least get you a first down. And again, just that big play possibility every time he touches it. Second and nine, Crimson from the 36. They'll give it to him again. Got a little room this time, nice but then play. he stood up yeah. and driven back, Jacob Brutker. In on the stop along with Drew Luster, but Brucker with the initial contact holds Langama to a three yard gain. I thought there was a big hole. I thought that was going to go for a big gain, but Brucker did a great job of getting off his block and closing that down. And, and again, a sure tackler. He gets his hands on you. He's been impressed with the Knights tackling as, as a whole. They haven't missed a lot of tackles. And Langama, not an easy guy to bring down. Third and six from the 39. SDMA students making some noise. They have to encourage their defense. Here's Harney, rolls out, some pressure coming up the middle, has time to throw, floats it to the sideline, oh, wow. and it is going to be incomplete, almost intercepted. And it's fourth down. Vocal ended up with the football, but at the sideline, out of bounds, and now Maple Grove will punt. Oh, great stand by the Knights, stopping Lagama on first and second down. Yeah, Vogel did end up with the yeah, football. He came I thought, it was yeah. a great catch, but he was about a foot out of bounds. That's why I don't like those rollout sprint passes, right? Because you limit where you can go with the ball. I like the dropbacks where you got the whole field. Seavers gets the punt away. And it's going to take a Maple Grove roll here and go down at the 25 yard line. Um, this is where the Knights, I mean, really have a shot here to take command of this game. If they're able to hold on to the ball for six, seven minutes and put another score on the board, that's huge. 10 minutes, eight seconds to go here in the fourth quarter. STMA with the football leading by one. Trying to pull the upset here of Maple Grove. Knights will start this drive from their 25. Bartle will give the Kadia breaks some tackles and gets a hard run out past the 31 to the 32 yard line. Gain of seven. He runs with good patience, doesn't he? He's not hitting the hole that hard. He's just kind of patience. He floats through there and he does a nice job of just finding that little opening and sliding his way through. Again, that's what they've done a lot tonight is just get good positive yards on first down. Second down and four coming. Hand off and this is Grabo. And he's gonna get out past still, still going out past the 35, past the 40, and out to the 41 yard line. And he gets 10. Wow. Their 34th rush of the night, Ryan. And as you look at the, the numbers, nobody with a lot of yards, but it's Bartle for 60. Oh, that's just coming back. So never mind. <laughs> would, they, would, I could, would it hold? Probably. Uh, but Bartle's got 60 yards. Padilla, 50 yards. And wipe off that 10 yards for Graybo, but he's got a 36 so far. So they're they're mixing it up between the three of them, and 
Yeah, good balance, right? Balance, when, when, you, when you talk balance on the offensive side, people always think it's running and passing, but when you don't know who's the weapon, you know, who to stop, you got to, three different people you got to defend. It's, it's hard to play defense against. They've done a nice job keeping everyone fresh, too, by doing that. So after the penalty, now second down and nine. Back to 26. The pitch goes to the oh. Yeah, ball is out. I think Maple Grove got it. They did. Recovered by Jack Weigel. Did you see his hands? You see how quick his hands got in on there? That was impressive. It, the ball was on the ground. It looked like Kadia was on top of it and going to be able to, to recover it. And just really quick hands by, by Weigel. And so that penalty, after it looked like STMA had gotten out past the 40 and said the five yard penalty, Kadia just never had it, and Weigel gathers it in. It was that shift. You see him with his right hand kind of scoop the ball up and went over Kadia, and he was able to grasp that. That was a great play, great hand eye coordination there to recover that. From the 21, now Maple Grove. Harney will throw, and the little throw is a little bit high and incomplete, intended for Ramatka down inside the 10. Yeah, Ramatka, we saw him catch that touchdown earlier, and that time just a little bit high. I like the call, though. I think everyone's expecting 21 to get that football. I like going for that on first down. So the Crimson try to take advantage of the STMA territory. Turnover just outside the Knights 20. Second down and 10 from the 21. And gone with the lone back behind Harney. He's up under center. He loses the football. Got back on top of it, but he lost the yard. Well, uh, what happens too is obviously the ball's wet, but it's getting colder too, and your hands start to go numb a little bit. You lose a little bit of feeling. That's why. Both coaches just talked about we got to take care of the ball. They both have the same conditions, but it gets harder and harder. You see, it's not just wiping them, it's keeping them warm. So now third down and 10, maybe 11 to go for the Crimson. Yeah, definitely a loss on that play. Crimson trailing by one here in the fourth. They'll give to Langama, trying to get some room on the right side, cuts it back inside the 15 to the 14. It'll bring up fourth down, but a good run, yep. Ryan, in here in four down territory. Tough uh, kicking conditions. They're going to go for it here, and now you've got fourth down and about four. Yeah, and I like that call. I don't think you needed to get it all there. And that was a really, really well blocked. It does look like they're, they're going to kick this, John. Remember that wind is more of a side to side than it was front to back. So I don't, you can see that flag blowing on our screen here from right to left. Uh, low snap, Sievers won't get it off. Gets blocked and STMA takes it. And they hold Maple Grove. Yeah, snapping's tough with that ball wet. You don't get the spin on it. Ball was kind of on the ground there. Yeah, and I'm surprised Maple Grove didn't go for that on, on fourth and what, three, fourth and four. Yeah, the low snap, and Crimson never had a chance nope. to get that one going. And so defense back on the field. First place from scrimmage. Nothing doing there for Maple Grove or for SDMA. It'll be second down. Loss on the play. So the turnover ends up not hurting the Knights. Yeah, good. I mean, the defensively, they've really stepped up tonight. They've given up yards, they've given up some big plays, but they, in the red zone, they've been really tough. We saw that stand, obviously, right before halftime. And they're blocking the field goal, so when it's mattered, they've really come to play here in the red zone. Grabo on second down and 11. He's got a hole outside the 30-yard line to the 33. He'll get a first down on a pickup of 12. 
Yeah, and I think too, just the, the difference in, in running styles between these two running backs, right? You know, Kadia, that little bit smaller, shiftier, and then you come in with, with Grable, who's just kind of more of a powerful runner. He's got speed too, but nice big hole. Great job up front too, opening up holes. First down and 10. Ball at the 32. They'll hand off Grabo. Good positive first down run. It's about four. Bring up second down and six. And that cont continues to run. We're halfway through the fourth quarter here with the Knights in front. 14-13. Yeah, and this is where if you're Maple Grove, you start thinking about that clock too, right? And if you're STMA, you, you don't want to snap a ball, you know, you want to be under five seconds left on that play clock. Take your four or five yards every every play and keep running that clock down. Second down and six. Bartle will push forward. And he'll be to about three yards. Still be short of the first down. It'll be third down and about three to go. Yeah, nothing fancy, just Right up the middle, getting a good push. He's, he's run that quarterback sneak successful a few times tonight. You can tell his back right foot. I've been watching that. When that's back, he's trying to get a good push off of that. You see those quarterbacks on sneaks. Tom Brady was great at it too. You get low, kind of get underneath that push and you can get those extra yard or two every time. Third and three from the 39 for the Knights. Under five minutes to go now. Bartle again, and this time Maple Grove stops him after a yard. It'll be fourth down this will be interesting. and two to yeah. go. And now what do you do This is you're Jared Essler? I'm going for it. I don't know. You have nothing to lose. You go for it. You've been able to get two yards a lot tonight. Your defense just came up with a big stop. Definitely keeping their offense on the field. Well, no, they're not. <laughs> they looked like they were, and now the punt team looks like it's coming on here. And you could tell Bartles wanted to stay on the field there. This is where you got to be careful of a hard, hard count. Don't want to jump off sides, give them a free first down. Low snap, but no rush for Maple Grove and Luster. No trouble getting the punt off. Angles it out of bounds, and Maple Grove will have it at the. And see where they're going to mark a 35 yard line. So look at it again. Not a long punt, but you didn't get it blocked. And you making Maple Grove go another 20, 25 yards yep. further than if you had gone for it there. Yep. And I think you trust your defense, right? The way the Knights have played defensively. I think you force Maple Grove to, to, to go the length of the field here. And this is it for the Crimson here. Going for their sixth win of the season, but trailing with under four minutes to go. All their timeouts remaining. This drive starting at their 35. Harney will give to Langama. Langama, three yards, maybe four to the 39. Brings second down and six. His 23rd carry tonight. He's over 200 yards. Yeah, he's had a couple of really big runs. If you take some of those big explosive runs out, 42 yards, 33, yeah. 40, you take those out, the Knights have done a pretty decent job on the majority of his carries. He's had four runs of 25 yards or more, but right, you're right. There's a power run, good hit until. It's five, but oh. SDMA keeps him short of the first down sticks, and the clock continues to run, third down and one coming. Yeah, and, th and those, Maple Grove will take that, third and one. I mean, the last couple of drives, they've been third and eight, third and seven. Line of scrimmage down to 44. Snap this one with three minutes to go. Lungama outside, first down and much more. Into STMA territory, still on his feet and out of bounds at the Knights 38-yard line. A gain of 18. On well, the right side of that crimson offensive line did a great job of sealing it off. See everyone kind of pulling to the right. Nice, I believe that was Dre, Dreheim on the outside too. Did a nice job of sealing that edge. 
Michael Wagner and Carson Lum, the right yeah. side of that offensive line. First down for Maple Grove. Clock stopped with the out of bounds play. It's at the 38 now of the Knights. Again, the Crimson with all their timeouts. Harney to throw on first down. has got a receiver open and Vocal reaching for the first down sticks. And stops the clock in a gain of nine. Yep, love the call. Quick, easy throw. You get the ball in the hands of one of your best playmakers. Get your quarterback with a completion. That's hard to defend against. Saltomacchio on the tackle. Second down and one from the 29 of STMA. Now give to Langama. Trying to get outside and won't be able to do so. It's dropped at the 30 yard line by Brutker. Brutker's had a nice game. Again, gets to the outside, and if he gets those arms around you, he is about as sure of a tackler as you're going to find. It's a loss of one. Third yeah. and two. And I thought Langama that time, if he would have cut it back to the right, had a seam, tried to bounce it to the outside. And you can't fault him. He's trying to make a big play there. And sometimes you just got to take a couple of yards. If he cuts back to the right there, he's got a seam. Third and two, Crimson from the 30. They'll give to Langama. He's got a first down. And inside the 25 yard line, it's a first down for the Crimson at the 24. Pickup of six with two minutes to play. Yeah, and just varying their offense enough with motion sometimes going away, sometimes coming towards the strength of the play. You see all the blue jerseys there on the right side of the line of scrimmage. They're running left, so just a little cat and mouse game between offense and defensive coordinators here. They'll give it to Stang. Hit in the backfield and spun around and no gain. Knights have seen that play and they make the tackle. Stop made by Roman Lindenfelser, a senior defensive lineman. Yeah, Lindenfelser cleaned it up. Brutker kind of set that edge and forced him to cut back into the all the guys pursuing there. Good team defense. Yeah, time too. I mean, minute and 15, all three timeouts for Maple Grove, so still plenty of time. But you got to start thinking about picking up Ball a first is down. down. Harney fumbled it. Now Maple Grove will use their first down with a third and long coming. Yeah, and when you start thinking of picking up the first down, you can't afford to, to waste a play. You know, if they run that play and able to get six, seven yards, it's a totally different. Now you're third and 11. Maple Grove ranked number two this week. Right the Star Tribune in Class 6A behind Eden Prairie. Lakeville North and Minnetonka, Lakeville South, Centennial, Stillwater, all at five and one. And we mentioned earlier, Maple Grove will finish the season against Minnetonka next Thursday. Yeah, kind of the same players in that yeah. top 10 almost every year, isn't it? It, it seems like it. Not a warm night here. The students have, have hung around, and I think we've lost a few uh, adults along <laughs> the way. Parents, I'm sure, are no. still here on the senior night, but uh, you know, it's, funny. it's a hearty group. Yeah, and if, <laughs> you know, when you're playing, you're not cold because you're out there moving. I remember I used to see, you know, I'd be warm and sweaty, and I'd look up my mom's in blankets and sleeping bag. I'm like, you know, tough enough, but when you're just standing there, sitting there watching the game, it, it's cold, especially when you get wet and get that wind. Third and 11 for Maple Grove. Two uh, timeouts remaining, minute five left in the game. Yeah, and I'm not worried about the clock if I'm Maple Grove. I'm just worried about getting yards. You don't have to get it all here. I think you, if you can get seven, six, seven, eight yards, that's all you're looking for. You don't necessarily need to get it a, a, a huge chunk play here. Harney, quick throw, gets the completion. The Stang, are they going to say incomplete regardless? It's either no gain, a completion and no gain, or an incompletion. Looks like it'll be a completion. And now it's fourth down and 11. And Maple Grove will use another timeout. Didn't he drop that? Didn't I thought so, it, too. Unless he yeah. recovered it before it hit the ground. You see a low snap. Yeah, I, I don't think yeah. he ever had it. So that should be an incompletion. Which I think might be what they ruled. Maple Grove. Want to get the I, right call. I mean, it's all it's all or nothing. You got to get the, the first down now. I'm surprised that I thought maybe they were going to run Langama there and try to get six, seven yards. 
and set up maybe a more four, a fourth and more manageable. Now he's still got fourth and, and 11 here. So you probably know a pass is coming. Knights fans sensing an upset here. They got to stop Maple Grove one more time, at least one more time. One more stop and they'll win it. And Knight defense has played well tonight. Yeah, they have. Given up some yardage, but a couple of touchdowns on a team that's averaging uh, about yeah. 40. And in the red zone, right? They've been really good tonight. See where that marker is. They got to get to about the 15 yard line. Harney throws complete oh, off yeah. the hands and incomplete off the hands of Ramatka and STMA holds. And a good hard hit on the yeah. Crimson tight end and the Knights with great defense. And they're going to win this game. He was open and the ball was there. It looked like it just went off the hands or through the hands. Noah Miller on the coverage for STMA. Yeah, good hard hit. One more look at it. Hand is being open a little bit high, but the cover, I think the hit was what caused yeah. the incomplete. Anytime you go across that middle and you know that contact's coming, that's that's not an easy catch. Knights. Yeah, gutsy game tonight by the Knights. And again, you go back to that opening drive, John, where Maple Grove just marched down and scored. You thought maybe Maple Grove was gonna be able to kind of pull away here, and the Knights just kept fighting and fighting and really physical on offense and, and they go for they get the two point conversion yeah, and their defense holds the rest of the way and how about this STMA knocks off the number two team in class 6 a 14 to 13 for their fourth win in their last five games to go to four and three on the season. Yeah and I and I go back to to Jacob Dinius. Do you remember when he was running down Chuck Langama on that run where it looked like Langama might pull away for an easy touchdown. Great hustle made that tackle. They ended up missing a field goal on that drive and, and you know you think about all those little plays that that add up at a fun game. And I'm going to get home and sit in the hot tub John. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Special thanks again to our crew yep. that, uh, that that had to battle the elements for what three hours here tonight and well just to give you an idea how tough our camera people are I was down there and I'm freezing and I said are you freezing he said no I'm actually hot <laughs> and I thought man am I gotten soft over the years especially thank special <laughs> thanks to Connor and Colin and Michael and Preston yeah, for a great best. job tonight and getting us good views in the pouring rain all night there was the look that we had and it's the Knights coming out on senior night and pulling the upset of Maple Grove for Ryan Iverson and all of our crew I'm John Jacobson thanks so much for watching our coverage tonight of high school football it's St. Michael Alberville winning it over Maple Grove 14-13 Knights the final